Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to our Coffee Times to talk about horror. And today I bring you some summer horror recommendations. It's coffee time. Today I'm also premiering my new Stranger Things mug. I think this is my third Stranger Things themed mug. <laughs> um, I saw it, I could not resist it, I had to get it. So this is the new addition to the mug collection. So summer is here in a lot of countries. The Netherlands, it's hard to tell it's summer because it keeps raining, it gets very cloudy, it's very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of missing the heat and the summer this year, but it is what it is. However, I'm here to give you some summer horror themed recommendations. Today I'm going to give you five horror books and five horror movie recommendations, so sit tight and let's go. We are more than halfway to Halloween, which is arguably the best season, the best time of the year, specifically also for horror, but not only fall and winter are great times for horror, summer also give us many many good opportunities to have some horror stories. You can read horror stories in the hot summer nights, by the pool, at the campfire, where normally we also tell horror stories to each other. You can be on an isolated cabin by the lake, so there are many amazing opportunities for horror also during summer season. I have talked about summer horror recommendations before, so I have tried to pick things that I have not recommended in the past. And the first one that we are going to start with is actually a YA mystery thriller that I read this year, and that is Cruel Summer by Juno Dawson. Now this is more of a mystery thriller than horror, but I think this is a perfect read for summer. After Janie's suicide, her friends decide to reunite at a Spanish villa to try to put the past behind them. But then an unwelcomed guest shows up and says that they know what actually happened to Janie. Somebody claims to know what actually happened to Janie, that it was not suicide, that Janie was actually murdered, and that unwelcomed guest also claims to have proof. This is a compelling psychological thriller for YA readers and it does have a little bit of romance and relationships in it, which might be a deal breaker for some people, but if you don't mind, it is not exactly the main focus. But we are talking here about couples as well that are friends and go together to this villa and so obviously because there are couples there's going to be some romance involved. It is a twisty murder mystery about this group of friends that are in a kind of isolated location. They are in this villa that is far away from the like the nearest town and they realize that they're all living there together with someone that might potentially be a murderer. We start to discover more and more about what happened to Janie that terrible night when she died, and we are going to see if indeed one of them is responsible for her death or not. This is a mystery told through different POVs, so you do hear the story from different characters, which allows you to try to figure out who is a possible suspect, who might be involved with it, who is telling the truth, who is keeping secrets. You don't know who to trust and you're basically invited to this villa with them to solve the mystery before somebody else dies. My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, and this is a horror thriller that is now a trilogy. We follow Jade Daniels. She is a high school senior, and she's absolutely obsessed with 80s slashers. And I could relate to her in so many levels because of this. She lives a thousand feet up in the mountains in Idaho, next to a lake where a massacre happened years ago. Now there is a killer on the loose and perhaps Jade's, you know, knowledge when it comes to slashers and masked killers might help her figure out who is the killer. This is a great and fresh take 
on the final girl trope and we have Native American representation as well as social commentary all really nicely weaved into the story. If you are a fan of slasher and horror you might really enjoy this book. My favorite part of it were actually some of the in between chapters that was a one-on-one -on -one slasher guide for beginners and those were so much fun to read as a horror buff. I think you're gonna have as much fun with them as I did. I love how Stephen Graham Jones touched on all the tropes from the slasher movies, commented on them, expanded on them, but do keep in mind that those chapters have some spoilers for some very popular well-known slasher movies so if you don't want to get spoiled but I feel like it's kind of like the classic so everybody should have done their homework <laughs> so um hopefully you guys don't get spoiled. Jade as a main character was a little bit polarizing because I couldn't tell if she was a good or a bad person at times and I kind of like that gray area with characters. I like when characters are a little bit unreliable because it makes the story a little bit more exciting for me and this was like I said a really interesting take on the final girl trope and I really love to see all the cultural elements of the Native Americans and so this book was a really great solid first entry in the trilogy. The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson and this is a horror way mystery. This is a bittersweet coming of age story reminiscent of stories like Stranger Things or Stand By Me and it is about a group of misfits kids that spend their summer investigating local legends and ghost stories. We are in the 80s and Jake has a very peculiar uncle, Uncle Calvin, and he loves occult artifacts as well as conspiracy theories. So the summer that Jake turns 12, he decides to initiate Jake and his friends into a new club, the Saturday Night Ghost Club. And in this ghost club, of course, they are going to be investigating possible ghost stories and, you know, local legends. Now, this is a book that is not um, specifically horror in the literal sense of the word. Um, but I think if you love dark coming of age stories with a little bit of horror atmosphere added to it, you're really going to be able to appreciate it. It is a reflection of family, of growing up, of loss, of all the things that makes up you know, that, that makes us go from like teenagers to adults, sometimes perhaps a little bit ahead of time. And even though it does have some classic elements of a horror story, keep in mind it might not be the main focus of the book. The Willows, Algernon, Blackwood, and this is a horror novella. This is an old one, so I don't know if everybody is familiar with it, but I thought because it was also short, it might be something that you might want to add to your summer TBR. Two friends are in the middle of a canoe trip down a river and the author uses nature and natural elements to create a sense of dread, a sense of fear, and it might work really great for people that have specific fear of the outdoors. This is an example of a good supernatural horror that is a little bit more modern than H.P. Lovecraft, but it might have some elements from him as well. This is an atmospheric and creepy story, but is a little bit more perhaps weird fiction. It is a well-told tale that uses the bare minimum to really bring that sense of dread. You don't have to expect here a lot of blood and gore. There's many other things that you can use to terrify your reader. The psychological horror, the sense of paranoia, I think those, if you use those elements really well in your story, they can be really effective. And last but not least, when it comes to the books, I would like to recommend you Ghoul by Brian Keane, and this is another adult horror. We are in the 80s and it is obviously summer and Timmy has made a discovery. So somebody in the cemetery has been kind of opening up graves and they don't know who was responsible for it until one night Timmy realized that it's not someone but something um, responsible for opening the graves. So before summer is over they're going to have to see how to stop this creature. The reason why coming-of-age stories are so compelling, and this is also another coming-of-age story, is because when you are younger, when you're a teenager, your vision of the world is very different, and your priorities and your fears are so different from when you reach adulthood and you understand 
life at a different level, especially when you are confronted with death. I think that's something that makes us mature very rapidly. So teenagers are the perfect kind of main characters for this type of tales because they also are very much influenced by their, you know, adults that are surround them, including their parents. And it's also quite ironic that most of the time kids and teenagers tell their parents about the threat, the danger, and they're never believed. This is a very intense horror story. There's many gruesome things that are going to happen here, but I think the main characters are great fun to follow and you will be rooting for them. Plus it has good pacing and I really enjoy how Brian Keane writes his novels. So if you've never tried anything by him, this one might be the one that you want to give a shot this summer. Now let's go to the movies and there are some movies that are very typical movies that I have probably mentioned before like Jaws, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th, Sleepaway Camp, Midsommar, like there are so many movies that are very very typical for summer horror that you might have already heard of so I have left those aside and I'm hoping that the ones that I'm going to mention now are maybe ones that you have not seen yet. Let's start with Jeepers Creepers and I know this movie is not perfect but it was so much fun and I do think it's perfect for summer. The movie is written and directed by Victor Selva it stars Gina Phillips and Justin Long as siblings returning home for spring break who encounter a violent truck driver. The film takes its name from the 1938 song and a version of the song is featured in the film. A brother and a sister are driving home for spring break when they encounter this kind of like flesh-eating weird creature. And the creeper, and that's the name of the creature in this movie, has been one of my favorite like character designs from this typical like franchise movies because I think he looks just so cool and the actor did actually a really good job to bring him to life. It is stylish, it is atmospheric, and I feel like the duo, the siblings, did such a good job at being great, relatable main characters and you actually kind of felt for them. So when you have strong main characters that people care about, there are more shocking moments when the horror starts to creep in and when their lives are on the line. I think there is really well-placed jump scares in this one, in gore, especially if you're someone that has not watched so many slashers or horrors of this type. I feel like you're gonna get a lot more of those thrills as people that kind of already expected. But every scene the creeper is in is thrilling. I just love the creature design, as I said, and I think the actor did a great job at portraying him and make him like a really fearsome character. Also, this movie has a, one of my favorite horror endings of all time. That end moment, those end shots, absolutely disturbing. Absolutely love it. So these is a movie that I love to rewatch, also purely because it has one of my favorite endings. Now let's talk about a newer film called X. So when X came out, I was really excited because of the cast. It has um, Mia Goth and Jenna Ortega, and I was really excited to see them in a horror movie. The trailer almost made me feel like this was a very Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes, and that was kind of what we got in a way. Also when I watched the trailer I thought this movie had a lot of potential and this is a movie directed by Ty West and he decided to turn it into a trilogy. Pearl came out almost the same year I think and then we are getting finally Maxine this year to complete the trilogy but the director I believe has already said that he might continue and it might not end up being just a trilogy. Either way I feel like this movie is perfect for the summer. In 1979, a group of young filmmakers set out to make an adult film in rural Texas, but when their reclusive elderly hosts catch them in the act, the cast find themselves fighting for their lives. This was such a good slasher, it's very reminiscent of classic horror, and you can tell that the director knows the horror really, really well. I have joked about this before, but actually this is a better Texas Chainsaw Massacre than the Netflix remake that came out the same year. It had that kind of sweaty, summer vibe, grossness, 
good kills. It was actually so much fun. But do keep in mind this is a slow burn, which means at the beginning the movie does have a slower pacing, but I think it all has a purpose. And this movie has main characters that you truly care about because Ty West allows them to interact with each other so that we get to know them so that at the time when their lives are at stake then you're really rooting for them because you have started to care for them and for their stories. But once the action starts, when people start to be really like threatened, it just gets better and better and every single kill just lands. You can see a lot of horror tropes are being exploited in the movie but they are being exploited in such a fresh and different way and there were moments that were so unexpected that it is not something you see easily in slashers. I feel like everything is a, li a little bit more expected and here there were some moments and some kills when I was like caught off guard. I love the ending and even though it was a slower burn I feel like the kills that you get are so satisfying but this is kind of like a weird disturbing movie so at times it might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable and I know it's also not a movie for everybody but give it a chance if you haven't because these became one of my favorites in 2022. 47 meters down and I wanted to include this one because to be honest with you guys I am not the biggest creature horror fan and I'm also not the biggest shark movie fan. I think it's because they never give me this feeling of being like unsettled and creepy that I look for in horror. They also never really shock me or surprise me but I have to say that 47 meters down managed to give me a feeling of dread and I think it's kind of an underrated movie. The survival horror film follows two sisters who are invited to cage dive while on holiday in Mexico. When the winch system holding the cage breaks and the cage plummets to the ocean floor with the two girls trapped inside, they must find a way to escape with their air supplies running low and great white sharks stalking nearby. This movie is not trying to reinvent the subgenre of horror, it's not trying to go all out with it and I think that's what made me really appreciate this movie. It's just a claustrophobic simple movie about a girl trapped underwater and having the threat of the sharks, having the threat of time against you because you have very limited air and I've said this before, I am horrified of dying by drowning. I think it's probably one of the worst experiences you can have. Um, I don't know, I just find it horrifying and I think a lot of people share that as well with me. I would not love to be trapped anywhere underwater at all. I would never go in underwater caves or whatever, like no thank you. So when I find movies that have people trapped underwater and they keep that tension coming, from someone that is trying to survive in such a situation, I think it really gets to me and I think the tension in this movie was really well achieved. I really also enjoy the underwater photography and like I said, this is a simple premise. It's also not trying to change the genre, but it does what it has to do and very well. The acting is good, so it's definitely one of those movies that I think is a little bit underrated. It's a solid summer thriller and if you guys have not checked it out yet, do so. There is a second movie that came out, I think it was called um, 40 Meters Down Uncaged, and that one was a little bit more, they took it up a notch, so it was a little bit more over the top, so it was a little bit less intense for me but I also really enjoy that one. Summer of 84. So this is a teen horror film that I have recommended before in my other channel uh, where I just talked about movies and this is a movie again that I feel like it's very underrated. I don't feel like many people know about this but I think it deserves a watch. When a group of friends suspect that their neighbor, a police officer, is up to something sinister they decide to investigate the matter. However, they are met with dangerous consequences. The young cast gives really believable good performances and I really love the mystery of this very small budget movie that manages to keep the tension going and it gets to show you that you don't need famous actors or a big budget to create a tense, good 
horror thriller. You have kids in the 80s with their bicycles, it's summer, they're looking for something to do, and you know, it's the typical like trope in a lot of thrillers where you see the neighbors doing something that might look suspicious and then you decide to investigate, especially when you are a kid, you look for any mystery to solve. The movie almost shifts from Steven Spielberg to Stephen King and honestly this is such a good gem and I'm surprised that not many people are talking about it. It highlights the pains and the fears are buried in kids because of the pain and the fears of becoming an adult, so it's another kind of coming-of-age story. It's that idea that nobody really knows anybody um, about your neighbors, the mysteries, the secrets, the things that they're hiding. At the end of the day, it's an entertaining story, it is dark, and it brings great nostalgia. And last but not least, I would like to recommend you a movie series, and that is the Fear Street series on Netflix. We got three movies dropped at once and I had so much fun that summer watching the three movies. They are based on Errol Stein novels by the same name. They all have slasher and supernatural elements and the film's overall story revolves around teenagers who work to break the curse that has been over their town for hundreds of years. The first three installments were directed by Lee Janiak. In case you didn't know, she's married to one of the Duffer brothers, the creators of Stranger Things, and I wish that she would do more movies, but I think she hasn't done anything since this. I know she did Honeymoon, which is another movie that I really enjoyed, but all these three movies came out together in the summer of 2021, and I love them, and if you have not seen them, these are perfect to binge this summer. Part one takes place in 1994. After a series of brutal slayings, a group of teenagers take on an evil force that's plagued their notorious town for centuries. This one had that kind of small town slasher at the mall um, with friends kind of vibe and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought this was going to be my favorite because it is based on the 90s, but actually my favorite was part two. Part two was set in 1978 and it gave me that summer camp slasher from Friday the 13th and it ended up being my favorite from the three. In the cursed town of Shadyside, a killer's murder spree terrorizes Camp Nightwing and turns a summer of fun into a gruesome fight for survival. This one also had Sadie Sink as one of the main characters and you guys know I love her. If you don't, now you know. I really love Sadie Sink and so I think she also elevated this part for me. And we also got part three which was a blast from the past and we go back all the way to 1666. Thrust back to 1666. Dina learns the truth about Sarah Fire. Back in 1994, the friends fight for their lives and she decides future. Part 4 has been announced. We only know that it's going to be based on the novel Prom Queen, which is another L. Stein novel, but it will be detached from this trilogy, which is now completed. So this is going to be a standalone and it takes place on an 80s prom, so I am extremely excited. She decided is preparing for prom. They have several candidates and there is a new candidate introduced to the prom. And since that person appeared, all the other candidates to become prom queen are starting to disappear mysteriously. We still do not have any release date whatsoever. It was just announced that they are working on it and I am extremely excited for it. I actually hope that we get more of these. All right, you guys, so these were my five books and my five movie recommendations for you to have a horror-themed summer. Let me know down below if you enjoyed the video and if you've read the books or watched the movies. And also, what kind of recommendation would you give to someone that wants to put a little bit of horror in their summer? Which books, which movies would you recommend? Thank you guys, as always, so much for watching and I hope to see you all, as always, in our next coffee time. Bye!